if you have that skill set. Now, you and I both know that at times in your life, whether that time is now or in the past, there has been some reluctance to doing so. Today, I have who I believe is our industry's foremost expert on this topic of how to overcome call reluctance. And we're going to be interviewing him, going in depth as to how you can overcome your fear of the phone. Guys, this episode today has the ability to unlock so much potential for you. This is going to be an amazing episode. I'm excited to have you all here. Thank you for joining us on this New Year's episode. It's going to be awesome. Talk soon. Here we go. The big question is this. How do those of us in the real estate industry with crazy amounts of ambition, how do we think bigger than the building of our own empires? How do we simultaneously seek success and significance, income and impact? My name is Justin Stoddard, and this is the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. Welcome back, everybody, to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show, first episode of 2023. Let's freaking go! I'm fired up about this episode. Uh, you guys, um, I have someone who's become not only uh, a mentor and coach of mine, but he's become actually a very good friend. Um, Wally Bressler, Thank you. pleasure to have you on the show today, my friend. Pleasure to be here, my friend. Happy New Year, buddy. Happy, happy New Year. Let me just, I want to read some of your bio points. I think it's important for people to know who we're talking to. Um, for those that don't know, Wally uh, has been in the industry, what, 20, 26 years, something like that? 25 um, this year. Was elected as, uh, or nominated as Success Magazine's, one of their top 125 uh, most influential people in our industry. Um, he also has over 40,000 coaching sessions under his belt. 40,000. Um, so he knows a thing or two. Um, I want to share a quick story. In fact, let me just say again, thank you for being here, Wally, on, on this Thanks episode. Me, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Um, I want to just start off with a story that you helped me to unlock, right? So I'm a guy who is very relational and also very ambitious. I built a model that really uh, favors warm market, and it actually favors going and finding people who are upstream from a transaction, right? People who have the ability to send you a lot of business in a hurry. Um, so that's something that I teach, that I coach to. And I know that many of the people who I interact with, who I even coach, have challenges at times picking up the phone and calling warm market people. Now, um, I'm grateful that that, I, I can't say that I've never had that feeling before, but I do know that calling people cold or even people when they're totally unexpecting it is challenging for me. And I know you and I had a conversation. It was probably a three to five minute conversation. It wasn't long where you began to uncover for me really quickly in a matter of minutes. You were like, I think that's probably it. And I was like, wow, I think you're right. What we uncovered, you guys, was that I had in my early years um, a, a very bad speech impediment. I stuttered, an awful stutter problem. Like I couldn't speak. And um, I recognized not only was it painful for me, but it was painful for other people who were there. And I associated that when I talked, I was going to make people feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so I had this inside of me that was keeping me from, from talking to as many people and opening as many opportunities as I now have the ability to do so. And I give credit to Wally for helping me to see that and do that. So I know firsthand the magic of what you do for people. And I'm, I'm excited and, and um, honored that you'd come on the show. I appreciate that. And thanks for the kind words and for sharing the story. You know, at the end of the day, you still had to do the work. You know what I'm saying? Even though I identified it, it didn't exactly solve the problem. There's some things you had to go through, but you said, you know, in the last month or two, we've been working together that it's really changed everything for you with not just your ability to call people and how you feel about it and, and whatnot. So super excited yeah. for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's delve um, right into this because again, I think the big problem that people have, right, is there's this reluctance to pick up the phone and call people. Many people are are referral based and they don't think they need to call people, right? Or they go referral based because they don't want to call people. There's other people who are prospecting based mm -hmm. who know they have to call people and people on both sides of that aisle, or maybe they have a hybrid business, right? Where they do both. There's reluctance in those people. In fact, I would, I would imagine the people that are watching here live and people that are going to listen to this afterwards are like, if they're really honest with themselves, <clears throat> they would agree that, <clears throat> excuse me, not at, at, at all times, they don't always feel comfortable picking up the phone. Why is that Wally? Why are we afraid of something that that really can't hurt us. <laughs> what, what causes that? Plastic and mentally. So as a point of clarification, you know, there's some people are okay talking to people they don't know, but would not want to talk to people they do know. <laughs> some people would rather talk to people they do know rather than people they don't know. And some people don't want to talk to anybody. So there's, you know, three categories of people. <clears throat> so it's not this that people are afraid of. Okay. It's not the phone itself. What it is, is that 
you know, 60, 65% of all salespeople have a very strong need for approval. And it's okay because needing to be included, needing to be improve, approved of, needing to be wanted, those are all perfectly normal things to feel. But when that need for approval, that need for acceptance gets to the point where it impact, imp, impedes your ability to have a good relationship with somebody or do the things you need to do to enjoy a happy life or do the things you need to do in order to, um, you know, build a great business for yourself, that's when it becomes a problem, right? And so, you know, and, and we talk about triggers and in my company is the trigger sales system, you know, trigger habits to help you overcome your blocks. What happens is, is there are negative triggers and these negative triggers, basically what they've done for most people who have call reluctance is that they've triggered their fight or flight response. And in most cases, it's a flight response. And it comes from, you know, you could have experienced some sort of trauma as a child, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. You could have been bullied. Um, you know, you couldn't made an observation when you looked at somebody and said, geez, I'm poor and created a poverty consciousness. Um, your parents could have been alcoholics and they never poured into you or your parents fought all the time. And, and strangely enough, we talked about this, too. Even people whose parents never fought impacts people, too, because people never learned how to deal with, um, you know, a confrontation or, or, or something where they're going to get leaned back on. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. so. Over time, as they've grown older, every time something came up that triggered the flight response, it reinforced for them that they're not going to do things where they're not going to be approved of, where they're not going to be accepted, where they're going to be rejected, where they feel like, you know, hey, I'm, I don't want to sound salesy. That's just fear of not being accepted or approved of. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, it, yeah, and, and it happens between the time we're born, you know, a little later up until the time we're like 12 or 13. You know, I had call reluctance for 10 years, you know, and I had. You know, binge eating disorder since the age of six. I was sexually abused when I was 10. That really is terrible for people's, you know, emotional and mental health. Um, I started looking at pornography at the age of 11. I started having sex at the age of 12. I was bullied for the first 13 years of my life. So, I, you know, by the time I was 14, I did not like myself. I had no self-esteem and I had lots of unresolved issues and who I talked to nobody about. You know, they couldn't figure out why I was in the principal's office every other day. You know, your mom's a teacher in the school system. You should really be doing a better job. You know what I'm saying? And meanwhile, I have all these unresolved issues. And so what happened was, is I was afraid of everything. And so, you know, when these triggers come up, you know, we get ready to go make a phone call. And then all of a sudden, as Rick Carson calls it, you know, your gremlin comes up and says, oh, no, 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 no. We don't make calls. We, you know, we don't do these things, you know, or, you know, and interestingly enough, Justin, you know, the same reason people don't pick up the phone is the same reason they don't keep a calendar. It's the same reason they don't stick to a diet. It's the same thing reason they don't stick to a gym re regimen. It's the same reason that they have, excuse me, all these goals that they've created that they've never reached. And it's the same thing that has dust, you know, collecting on people's vision boards, right? It's all the same thing. It's this, it's this, this, this low self-esteem, this low self-worth, this need for approval that gets in the way. Now, I, I, I'm not one of those people. I don't think we have self-esteem. I don't think if we have low self-esteem in one area, you have it. It's low everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you put me in front of a group of people to speak, high self-esteem, coaching, high self-esteem, cooking, high self-esteem, you know, being a ballerina, low self-esteem, right? Being a jockey for a horse, low self-esteem, right? So, you know, we, it, it, it varies, but, you know, in this arena, you know, it's that, and here's the thing, it doesn't make us bad people. And here's the thing, it's not anybody's fault. It's not even their fault that they have call reluctance. It's just that all those things happened when they were a kid and nobody showed them how to deal with those emotions so that they could just resolve them and move on. And that interesting, only that, and I hope everybody that's listening here has has given yourself permission to be honest with yourself, number one, mm -hmm. to say, yeah, I have a legitimate fear of the phone. Mm -hmm. And also in a conjunction with that, that I believe my opportunities in life would be bigger. And maybe many of the struggles you're facing right now would mm -hmm. either be smaller or non-existent if you did not have that reluctance. Okay, that's the first yep. thing we need to be honest with is that there's yep. real repercussions to what we're facing here. The second thing is that you're probably the reason why you have that because the phone, as you said, in and of itself, it's an inanimate object. It can't actually hurt us. It's not like it's a bomb, right? Nope. It can't actually blow up and hurt us. Nope. So the reason why we are responding in the way that we are is because something happened in our youth, typically in our developmental years mm -hmm. that caused us to have some sort of fear of other people, right? Or some uh, um, over extended need to, to have their approval. Is that what I'm hearing you say? And because yeah. of that, we, we are unwilling to put ourselves in conversations with people for fear that we'll experience that similar pain that we experienced when we were younger. Is that? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, yeah, I think, that, I think that, that sums up nicely. You know, I mean, you know, it, it's all about avoidance strategies, right? We, we get mm -hmm. triggered, you know, and, you know, T. Harbecker calls it TFAR, thoughts, feelings, actions, results. 
you get a thought. There's a trigger that comes in, right? And then there's this, an associated feeling that comes with that. And then usually there's an action. Sometimes it's inaction, which is still an action. And then we get a result. What a lot of people do and what I did, you know, I was addicted to sex, pornography, food and money for, you know, 40 plus years. You know, I would get the trigger, but then I would skip the feeling. I'd go right to eating or watching pornography or wasting money. You see what I'm saying? And so, but here's the thing. There's other things that are avoidance strategies that are not addiction, that don't appear to be an addiction, but, you know, being a perfectionist is an avoidance strategy, you know, and uh, procrastination is an avoidance strategy. And, you know, engaging in, in, in cleaning like crazy is an avoidance strategy. And not just overeating, but eating to not have to deal with something is an avoidance strategy, right? And all of those things come up in an effort to not have to deal with the, the pain that comes along with potentially putting ourselves in a position where we can be rejected. Is that fair? Man, yeah, it's so powerful. And number one, I want to thank you for being really vulnerable. I remember when I sat through a seminar at one point where a very uh, successful looking gentleman who didn't need to share his story shared his story about being a convicted felon. And it was like at that moment. I got that covered too. <laughs> so so you, you think about like the stuff that oftentimes we kind of hide that we're kind of embarrassed of, you just laid out on the table for everybody. And I think it's powerful yeah. for those of us in the audience to say, you know what, each and every one of us are human and there are things that we're not proud of. And the mm -hmm. more that we can bring those to light. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you need to go to Wally Bressler level of, of, of authenticity and transparency. We're probably not ready for that yet to be able to say, on a live show, here's, here's like all the skeletons in my closet, mm -hmm. but at least admit to yourself that, that you've done some things that, that, that haven't been in the best mm -hmm. interest of you and those around you. I think once you start to do that and really get honest with yourself, it, it starts a trend of not hiding from stuff, right? Of not mm -hmm. hiding from what may keep me from, from picking up the phone and calling people, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, at one level. You know, I think to your, to your point, you know, we talk about triggers, and, and be, not just being aware of what triggers us, but, you know, what's the source of all of this insanity? You know what I'm saying? If I can, if I can become aware of exactly what's creating all these problems, I can solve the problem, right? I can't, I can't hit a target I can't see. I can't over, overcome an enemy that I can't fight. But once I, I and, and it does require, like you said, it requires honesty. In fact, it requires radical honesty. It doesn't require you accepting responsibility for things you didn't do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just, have somebody, I just had a talk with somebody who was eight years old and kind of blames himself for being sexually abused by a family member. I'm like, you're eight. Not only could you not fight this person off, but you probably didn't even know to fight them off. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not accepting responsibility for things you didn't do, but it is accepting I mean, it, it being honest for what you did and owning it at the highest level. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I went to federal prison. I was a dummy and I got connected with somebody and I looked the other way on stuff I shouldn't have. I wasn't trying to steal money, but I wasn't exactly trying to prevent it from happening either. You know what I'm saying? I've loaned $5 million. I was unfaithful to my ex-wife four times. I put all my kids in a tough place. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I did it. I got, and, and the thing is, is you can't make that change. And so you're honest with yourself. But I think, you know, it's interesting. I think the reverse of what we're thinking is going to happen happens. We think we tell people something and they're going to go ahead and say, oh, shame on you. Tis, 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 bad boy. When you're vulnerable and you own it, especially when a lot of people can't do that, you get tons of respect from people, amazing responses from people, tons of empathy, right? Because the fact of the matter is, is and this is how um, uh, Kristen Neff, you know, she's a doctor uh, and she's, her specialty is self, is, um, we talked about this, is about, is about self-compassion, is that, you know, people want to offer, in most cases, compassion and empathy to other people because they've probably gone through the same thing that you have. You know what I'm saying? She calls it common humanity. Like there are so many people that have been sexually abused. There's so many people that have had been physically abused. There's so many people that have had horrible things happen to them that we could go ahead and put 10 people in a room and you'd be able to identify with at least one or two of those people with something you did. And when you do that, not only does it connect you with people, but it makes them more empathetic to what you're going through. It connects you with them, but it also gives you the opportunity to feel like you're not the only one going through it. Is that fair? I have to bring something up right now that, that comes to mind. So my family and I have been binge watching the show, The Chosen. Now, regardless of your spiritual connection, I'm going to share a, kind of a correlation here that I'm seeing um, is that, again, whether like whatever you believe about Jesus Christ, like that's your belief, right? But um, in that show, at the very beginning episode, a gal who's literally possessed by demons, right? Um, and, and, and lives a, a pretty awful life up to that point later becomes like one of his confidants, like is traveling with him. And it's so interesting to see how a human can transform. And again, however you believe that happens, that's, that's yours. Yes. Um, but I do believe that people can change. One of my favorite quotes, there was a, a famous prison warden 
um, who was quoted as somebody had approached him and said, don't you know that um, leopards don't, or that um, tigers don't change their stripes? In other words, all these people in here are bad. Like, what are you doing? Spend all this time trying to mm -hmm. change these people. And his response was, yes, but I don't work with tigers. I work with humans and humans change every day. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, again, we, we started down the path of phone call reluctance mm -hmm. and have gone much deeper than that, which I thank you for being such yeah. an authentic human being to be able to share that. But I think yeah. at any level, the very first step is to recognize that I'm not like, I need to be better at this. If I'm going to be in a sales led profession, like real mm -hmm. estate, not being able to pick up the phone and call somebody is a problem. We, we should not brush it under the rug because in this market, in this economy, it might be the end of your dream. It might be the end of your career if you don't overcome this. Like it's that important, folks. Maybe you could get away with, with not having this skill set in years past when everything was selling. But I don't believe you can just brush stuff like this under the rug and move forward thinking that your business is going to be okay in this in this existing market. I would agree. You know, and 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 you know, um, I had a thought and I, I lost it. I guess I'll have to come back to it. But you know, it. While you're thinking about it, we'll take the next second. What I is it? You got it. Go. Okay, sorry. You know, you had said it's it's about call. It's not. It's never about the phone. You know, what I'm saying it has nothing to do with the phone, like we talked about. It is call reluctance, but it's all internally driven. It's it is it is not your fault, but through the power of neuroplasticity, which is the ability to rewire your brain, you can change. Everybody can change. I've had people go through my class who are 18, people who are 40. I had somebody who was 60, somebody who was 70, who all made the changes they needed to make, no matter what happened in their life and how long ago it was to make the changes. So you always have the ability to make the change. I, mean, I didn't start working on myself until 50. You know what I'm saying? I was like 49, 50 years old, and they started started doing the work at 50. Wow. So it can it can absolutely happen that way. The other thing is, is this is, you know, people are all, oh, I got to do social media. I got to do videos. Yeah, you do. Right. You need a presence online. You absolutely need a presence online. That's what's going to validate you. That's going to give you authority and credibility. But I don't care if, you know, if we, let's use a football metaphor. You're going to your video is going to get people to the five yard line. You still got to punch it into the end zone. The only way we got to do that is picking up the phone and having a call with them and building a relationship with them. Only three to five percent of the business we get on, on any given day is now business. The rest of it needs to be nurtured. Right, we've got to talk to you. We've got to build relationships with that. So even if I get them to say, "Hey, I'm interested," once I talk to them, I've got to get them on the phone. I've got to get an appointment with them. You know what I'm saying? And so you still are going to have to use the phone. The phone's not going anywhere. And I've done some research, and on average, up to half of the people in the three biggest demographics that make up the United States, which is Millennial, Gen X, and uh, and Baby Boomers, almost half of each one of those demographics want to talk to somebody prior to making a big purchase. So they're going to want to talk to you. Yeah, I think it's it's the realization that that this needs to be overcome and it and it can be overcome, right? So let's talk about that. Well, let's talk about what are the steps to overcoming mm -hmm. uh, this. Like, like how would you start? Now, let me just preface this by saying, for any that are like, I got to talk to this guy because I realize this skill set is not mm -hmm. is is costing me so much money every month. I'm going to put in the chat while you're answering my question, Wally, of, of how do people take the first steps? I'm going to put in the chat a link to your calendar. Get on Wally's calendar, spend a few minutes with him and just see if there's something there. See if there's a connection, some alignment that will help you get unstuck from this. So anyway, go ahead, Wally. What's the first step in overcoming this? I'll post this link inside the chat. Yeah, listen, sign up for 15 minutes. I guarantee you that if we talk for 15 minutes, I'll tell you exactly why you're not able to pick up the phone or why you can't get in front of a video camera or why you sabotage your business or whatever it is. If you give me 15 minutes, I will tell you exactly where it comes from. So step one is awareness, right? Can't solve a problem that I, I don't know exists. So I've got to go and figure out what is it that's keeping me from picking up the phone or not doing the things I need to do to be successful, whether it's personally or professionally. You know, I'm, I'm, I have my clients, you know, you've done this. You could get a couple of note cards and says, what is causing me to have call reluctance? That's it. And it's interesting because for you, you hadn't really thought about the whole stuttering thing until... You know, we worked on it and also just, you know, I did stutter when I was a kid. And I was like, bingo. You know what I'm saying? And so your brain remembers everything you've ever tasted, touched, smelled, heard, or seen. It remembers it all. It stacks in a big sandwich. And a lot of times we push it down because it's painful, but it's all in there. And so when you ask your subconscious, hey, what's this come from? It is more than happy to tell you because your brain wants certainty. It wants clarity. Its job is to keep you alive and to keep you at peace. And so it's going to serve up to you whatever it needs to serve up to you so you can resolve that. So the first step is awareness. The second step is, is letting these feelings come up. I call it um, 
the second word, so, so it's awareness and then it's define and identify and then it's become mindful, right? So now that I've got awareness of what the problem is, now we have to be aware every time the feeling comes up, right? Because a lot of folks, they skip that emotion. They go right to whatever, you know, perfectionism, procrastination, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. I'm going to let that feeling come up. I'm going to say, okay, you know what? This is anxiety. This is where the anxiety comes from. And then I'm going to become mindful. And mindfulness is nothing more than just focusing on the present. If I think about the future and all the bad things that can happen, I get scared. I get anxious, right? If I think about the past and I think about all the bad things that happen, I get sad and depressed. But if I'm focusing right now on the present and just letting these emotions come through, I can feel neither of those things. I'm a, you know, and, and, you know, a real simple tip is, is it's, it's called box breathing. You just inhale for a count of four. You hold for a count of four, you exhale for a count of four, you hold for a count of four, and just do that. You know, if you feel yourself getting anxious, if you feel yourself starting to go off the rails, just start doing some box breathing. Eventually, you'll disconnect from your fight or flight instinct, and then you'll reconnect with your what they call rest or digest. You know, the reason that you get a dry mouth and a pounding heart and a light head and and all these other things when you go to pick up the phone, it's because your fight or flight instinct kicks in. When your fight or flight instinct kicks in, your saliva glands get turned off. Um, and your adrenaline gets kicked in, which also I think helps create a dry mouth. Your digestive system doesn't shut down, but it goes down to minimum. Um, your bladder gets <laughs> released, and uh, and your lungs, you know, the bronchi, the bronchi, uh, bronchi, they, they actually expand. So if you have to fight or run, you're you're prepared to do that to have the energy. And the connection between fight or flight and what they call rest and digest is literally just breathing. And if you can do that mindfulness and breathe, you'll take yourself out of freaking out mode. Okay. Once you do that, we've got to we've got to go ahead and rewire our brains, and that's when we get into morning and morning rituals. I'm a big fan of Hal Elrod's Miracle Morning, right? Six step process, ten minutes a day. He calls them savers, so he's scribing, which is journaling. A is for affirmations, you know, self love affirmations are helpful. V is for visualization, um, so visualizing, you know, what you what you want to be like, what you want to see. E is for exercise, R is for reading, and then S is for silence. I'm a big fan of mindful meditation, which really works in that mindfulness because that mindfulness is what rewires your brain and keeps things that normally bother you from bothering you, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally does. Yeah, and you then, can walk through that again. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then the last thing is, is um, um, the next thing is, is deciding what you want, how to really get what you want. You know, and I'm, I'm a big fan of Daniel Pink, which is, you know what? Let's not use carrot and stick motivation. Let's go ahead and go with, you know, what's autonomy look like? What does my life look like when I'm living my best life the way I want to? And then what do I have to master to make that happen? And then the last step is finding out what your why is, right? People are like, oh, a car is a why. My kids are a why. You know, a car is a what? Your kids are a who. They're not a why. But your why could be, you know what, I grew up with no money and I'm going to make sure that my kids never have to worry about money again. So I'm going to learn to pick up the phone and do what I have to do to make sure my kids never have to worry about money. That's a why. So just in, in, to recap, it's awareness. And then it's it's awareness every time that emotion comes up, those emotions come up, combined with define and identify, and then mindfulness, and then rewiring your brain through morning rituals, especially like the ones in the Miracle Morning. And then going ahead and, and thinking about what you want, like what does autonomy look like? What does my life look like when I'm living it the way I want to? What do I have to master to make that happen? And then what is my why? Okay. And believe it or not, you can do that in like two months. It's crazy. I mean, you know, think about how old you are and how long you, you know, had carried this burden of, of feeling you know, less than or judged or whatever from having a, a stuttering problem. And you, it took you like two weeks to realize it to get to the point where you could pick the phone up, right? I mean, some people it takes longer, but usually for most people it's eight weeks. It's crazy. Something you said um, that um, I don't know if you meant to say, but I, I caught it. You said the point of picking up the phone is to create relationships. I believe that when our mind is playing tricks on us, mm -hmm. uh, we believe that we're destroying when we pick up the phone. Like we're going to ruin a relationship. We're going to ruin somebody's day by interrupting them at what they do. Like our our frame and our narrative is I'm coming in to disrupt. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm coming in to, to, to cause somebody to be unhappy and we don't want that especially as people pleasers many of us are we don't want to cause discomfort we don't want to ruin we don't want to destroy friendships relationships everything and so i think getting the right frame is no i'm here to build i'm here to create relationships i'm here to create value for you mm -hmm. right and it in the whole purpose of your conversation is exactly exactly that it's not to take it's not to take it's to mm -hmm. come to give right to give value to give service to give, advice, to give counsel um and that's helped me, right? To really be clear of like, what, what am I doing? Am I calling to like, like tell someone that they're an awful person? No, I'm calling to like help them, to serve them, to help them have an amazing business. Okay, great. Let's pick up the phone and call them. That sounds awesome. That's that's aligned with who I am. 
great. Let's do yeah, it. You know, and that, that changes the meaning in, in your head all day long. And to your point, though, you know, we as a, a society need to relieve ourselves of the responsibility for other people's feelings and thoughts, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What I, what I, my feelings are not your responsibility. They're my responsibility. If I get mad at you, even if I reject you, my rejecting you has nothing to do with you. It has to do with what I like. You know, I call it my, my, my theory of Brussels sprouts. You like Brussels sprouts? Depends if there's enough butter. Yes. Enough butter, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you put bacon and, and onions and, <laughs> and maple syrup and oil and you crisp them. They taste great. Like yeah, you yeah. do that to a sandal, like and make it taste good. So the whole point is, is, you know, if you have to do that much to a Brussels sprout to make it taste good, it can't taste that good to begin with. But the fact of the matter <laughs> is, is you like them with enough butter. I don't like them, period. But is it the Brussels sprout or is it you or me? Or you or I? It's it's, it's us, right? Yeah, like yeah. It has nothing to do with the Brussels sprout because, you know, and, and we're Brussels sprouts. Some people are going to like us and some people aren't. Hmm. But when you're a pleaser and you take so much personal responsibility for other people's happiness and other people's well-being, when you realize it's their responsibility, you know what I'm saying? I can do things that make people happy, but it's up to them to be happy with it, right? So yeah. when we relieve ourselves of that responsibility and, and realize that we can only do our best every day and for some people our best is going to be good enough and for others it's not, there's a t- truckload of freedom in that. And then when you when you tack on to that, what you were talking about, listen, I'm building relationships here. I mean, I you know, we talked about this before. You have what three, four hundred people. You know, you had Jay Papazon, and, and like if you look at your own beginning, you have Jay Papazon, you have Uncle G there. You get a lot of people who are are heavy hitters in their industry who are kind enough to get on your podcast and build a relationship with you, who likely know who you are now and will take a phone call from you. And if you call them, you know, number one, you have the power of reciprocity at your at your disposal, right? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, for them and for you, but, you know, and because you got them some additional publicity as well. But in addition to that, they know you. And so if you call them and say, listen, I'm working on this and I would love to make something where the two of us could benefit from it. Not everybody's going to say yes, but more people than not will say yes, just because of the relationship aspect of it. Yeah, I agree. That's uh, that's awesome stuff, Wally. I think I'm hoping that everybody, everybody that's that's tuned in today has gotten something from this because all of us, just what you described to me, like why don't I pick up the phone and call Grant? Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if, if you want to, if I may, um, if you want to continue to stay in touch with me and see some of the other stuff that I post on a regular basis, you can just go to um, Phone Sales Secrets on Facebook and, and join the group. I am rebranding my company and my name. And things will change. But right now, you know, do that. And then, again, go to Calendly.com forward slash Coach Wally. We'll have a no cost, no obligation consultation. You spend 15 minutes with you. I'll tell you exactly why you're not able to get on the phone or do consistently what you need to do or have good relationships with people or anything related to getting in front of the phone or on it and getting in front of the camera on the phone. That's awesome. Uh, Wally, I've got one more question for you that everybody gets asked that comes across the Think Bigger Real Estate stage, which is this. You're a big thinker. Uh, your your impact is is stretching um, to the four corners. Tell me, what does Wally do to continue to be a big thinker, to continue to expand your possibilities? What does that look like for you? What do I do to be a big thinker? I mean, I, th- I think really what it comes down to for me is to realize that, you know, and I think it's, it's kind of a trite saying, but what got me here today isn't going to get me to where I need to be. And I think what what's driving me now is that I don't want people to have to hit rock bottom like I did to make the changes they want and need in their life. Does that make sense? Like number one is making sure that I create a life for my kids that was significantly better than I had. But secondarily is to do that. I'm going to, anybody who's willing to listen and talk to me, I will go ahead and explain to them how they can deal with whatever they need to deal with so that they don't have to wait until they're ready to put a gun in their mouth. Like I was to go ahead and create a great life for themselves. And I think those two things are driving me to get my message out, to talk to more and more people, to to be a bigger thinker of how can I get in front of more people to help them so that they don't have to do the things that I did. And, and basically, and I'll leave you with this. Um, I remember when I started, I, I, I hired a counselor, finally a therapist who I connected with and talked to her twice a week for two and a half years. That's, I mean, that's how bad it was, but I just knew I needed help at that point. But I remember one of the first days we met, she was tell me about the happiest day of your life. And I thought about it for like, she literally sat there for 10 minutes and said nothing. And I realized that I had never had one happy day in my life. And I was 50, I was 50 years old and I couldn't think of one happy day for my life. And now as I think back, as I'm talking to people, I don't want anybody to have to go another day without thinking about something they were happy about. And that's really, I think what's helping me think big and in, in, in how I can get in front of as many people as possible. So they don't have to have another day where they don't feel like they're good people and where they deserve or more of your great things. Powerful stuff, Wally. Thank, I want to thank you. you again so much for, for all you've shared here today. Again, for those that are listening in and you want some help 
um, seeing if if there's something that's keeping you, and I guarantee that there is. Um, yep. Schedule a few minutes with Wally; it'll be worth your time. And sure. uh, appreciate it, Wally. And to all those listening, my uh, I have one more invitation tomorrow. I'm doing a "It's Not Too Late" that's the name of it business planning session uh, for those of you that have been hibernating uh, up until now. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes or reach out to me, DM me, and I'll send you the link privately. You'll walk out with a fully complete business plan, um, ready to go and hit, hit the ground running. So uh, be sure and uh, do that. Join us in the Think Bigger Real Estate Facebook group. And my final request of everybody listening here today are these three simple words. And they are go think bigger. Wally, thanks for helping us do that today, my friend. Thanks, brother. Take care. Good luck. Take so, care, everybody. See you. Thanks. Be honest. Hearing good ideas is not enough. You have to apply them in order to get the results desired. If you found value in today's episode, then you're really going to love the community of big thinkers and high achievers that we are building in order to help you to apply the principles taught today. If you're not yet a member of Think Bigger Real Estate on Facebook, go 